Hey, how's it going? This is Joe Intel. Today, I'm taking a look at the Sonos Arc. So what is this thing? This is a fully featured soundbar with 11 speakers, eight woofers, and three tweeters. This has Wi-Fi streaming with a voice assistant. I prefer Google Voice, and so this has that. They claim that this has Dolby Atmos. I'll get into that in a bit. This can be expanded with other Sonos products if you wanna add surround sound speakers or actual Sonos subs. I don't really love soundbars, but I can say that I was surprised by how good these actually sound considering the form factor and I think that this is just overall a well thought out product. The unboxing is very Apple-like with just two cables, a power cord, an HDMI cable, and an HDMI adapter in case you're using an optical connection. There's an instruction manual in there and it just shows three steps. What are some of the features? Sonos is known for their whole home audio solutions where you can stream to multiple rooms using different streaming services. And so they have the largest list that I've seen. They have all kinds of services from Cobuzz, Deezer, YouTube Music, Pandora, Spotify. I mean, pretty much anything you can think of and it's there. They also offer something called TruePlay, which is room correction, but it's only on iOS only. They've done a good job developing the Sonos ecosystem, meaning that their app is very mature. It's polished compared to other apps that I've used, where it's just kind of clunky. This is very well thought out. Everything just works. Everything is where you think is supposed to be, and it does what it's supposed to do very easy. There are touch controls on the soundbar itself in case you can't find your remote. So one thing I wanna make a point of is I think that Sonos really knows the end user. They know what most people want. So for example, just take a look at their feature set. So aside from the streaming services, they have loudness compensation, which adjusts for how our ears hear. That's very technical, but they've kind of just built that, built that in. They didn't make a big deal out of it, and there it goes. It sounds the way it's supposed to sound. They have a button for speech enhancement, which is an issue for a lot of people. They have a hard time hearing the voices. You just press a button, there it is. It enhances some of the vocal region, and so that's not accurate, but it's useful. They have a night mode, which lowers some of those bass frequencies. Just a touch of a button, there it is. They have an option for compression, which levels out the volume so that the commercials aren't super loud. They have HDMI arc, meaning that if you have a TV that's compatible, you can just use that TV remote to control the volume, power, and everything. If you don't, then this actually has a feature where it can teach your existing remote some of the functionality or any other remote that you have lying around. You can go in, tell it what the volume up and down should be for the Sonos, and you can use that remote to control it. So let's talk about sound quality. First thing that I look for is bass. When I see a sound bar like this, I don't expect much bass, but it does have bass. I don't know how they do it. Actually, I do. I found that they do seem like they have some kind of processor that kind of synthesizes and makes the bass a little bit better than it should. To me, one thing that was fascinating was the soundstage was behind the sound bar, which is a cool effect. It makes it sound like it's it's just a different presence effect where it sounds like the person is behind the sound bar. Kind of cool. The sound stage is very wide and you're wondering how does it do that? Because that's main issue that I have with sound bars is that they're not wide enough to give you a good left and right stereo separation. But these kind of do. So how does it do it? I think they're using all of the speakers to kind of control the off axis response, meaning that if you stand up, sit down, move to the left or right, the sound sounds pretty much the same and doesn't start shifting in tonality when you go off axis. And I think that also helps make these sound wider than they are. Tonally, I found that these are pretty much correct. Maybe a little bit of a dip in the mid range frequencies. I felt like there wasn't as much heft in that area, but using their True Play app, it seemed to correct some of that and make it a little bit flatter, a little bit more natural and accurate sounding. Now, this is not the smallest soundbar, but it's still relatively small compared to my home theater setup. And I was concerned that it wouldn't get loud enough, but this actually gets pretty loud in most rooms. I also mentioned that off-axis response is good, meaning that these are also a little bit more forgiving with regards to placement. So if you have to be closer to a wall on one side than the other and you're not 
placing it symmetrically within the room. It'll still sound okay just because off axis, what's bouncing off the wall is very similar to what's coming at you directly compared to some other sound bars where whatever's being reflected is totally different and you can really tell like, oh, that doesn't sound right. I think that's one of their secrets. Off axis response is very consistent on these and I think that's what gives you that good full sound from any angle. Now I did try the surround sound and Dolby Atmos content on this and they claim that it's supposed to make it sound like it's coming from around you. I kind of got maybe some rear effects depending on the content, but definitely as far as the heights, I can see what they're trying to do, but it doesn't sound like my actual Dolby Atmos system where I can really hear a helicopter going around me and I could tell where it's supposed to be. It's not like that. I can tell that they're trying to simulate that, but there's only so much you can do with a single soundbar in front of you to try to create sounds above and behind you. I don't think it's realistic. If you really want something like that, if you want a real surround effect, you might want to consider getting their other Sono speakers to place behind you. Now the bass was pretty good. You're not going to hear some super deep bass. You can add the Sono sub for that. One gripe is that you have to use a Sono sub. You can't just use any sub. Well, that's what it is. The other thing that I thought was kind of interesting, I was expecting there to be a dynamic EQ, meaning when you had it at low volumes that they would extend the bass response out further to give you some deeper bass, but as you turn it up that it would lower that, but I didn't find that in any of my measurements. So they're using a lot of psychoacoustic tricks, which I'll show you later on if you're into that technical stuff when I get into the graphs and showing you the measurements of these speakers. So quickly, let's talk about TruePlay, their room correction feature. So as I said, it's iOS only and it's pretty quick. It only takes about three minutes. They do a measurement in your seated position and then they do another one where they ask you to walk around with your iPhone or iPad around the room to kind of just measure what the room is doing. And I think they do some kind of algorithm where they're waiting it for your seated position, but also kind of blending in what the rest of the room is doing to make it not sound terrible in other locations. So I thought it was interesting. They're using a moving mic method. They're telling you to move it in the circle. And it works pretty well. What I noticed was that there was improved bass. It was sounded less muffled. And to me, it sounded like there was better imaging. So who is this for? This is for you if you are looking for a soundbar and you want something that is tonally pretty accurate. If you're one of these audiophile guys, kind of like, I don't know if I would consider myself audiophile, but if you're into accurate sound, this is probably the most accurate soundbar sound that I've heard. I also reviewed the Sonos Beam a while back and I commented on that, that it was also measuring pretty flat and I was surprised by that. This is for you if you're into simplicity. There's a very few chords that you have to connect to this. If you have an HDMI ARC compatible TV, all you need is the power and then HDMI to your TV and that's it. These are for you if you want to be in the Sonos ecosystem. You can expand these by adding the Sonos sub, the rear speakers from Sonos. You can do some whole home audio and use this as your main hub. You know, you can use Google Voice Assistant to tell it what you want to do, and then it can play on those speakers and some other speakers in other rooms. You can use it to control your thermostat, so many different things. So it's a smart speaker as well as a soundbar. So this is also for you if you don't mind the price. I'll leave a link in the description to see the current pricing, but it's not the least expensive soundbar that you can find. So who's this not for? This is not for you if your priority is the ultimate sound quality, right? If you really want a home theater with really low bass and just perfect imaging, you're gonna want to get separate speakers and an AVR, an amplifier. I mean, you want, you're gonna want some height speakers. So it is considerably more involved, but you will get better sound overall. This is not for you if that's what you're looking for. If you're willing to spend more and go with a more complex system, then definitely you're gonna wanna look at a full home theater setup. So what are some alternatives to these? And I would say, first thing I would think of is the Sonos Beam that I've reviewed, which is considerably less expensive, but they didn't get as loud as this. So if you have a larger room, then you may want this instead of the Beam. And this also claims to have Dolby Atmos where it fires up and to the side, and it does have a wider sound stage. And I don't know so much about the height if I would buy it for that, but just keep in mind, they're for different size rooms. The other thing is around the same price range is the Klipsch, the fives, which are some actual powered bookshelf speakers that are separate left and right. They're not claiming Dolby Atmos, just stereo, but they do have HDMI arc, they have a remote, and they sound excellent. 
So that's another option if maybe you're into more music and you want something with a little bit more bass and something just more accurate, more hi-fi, I would say. Less features though. So that's another option. So let's go ahead and place these on the speaker leaderboard. All right, so here we are at the speaker leaderboard and we have the Sonos Arc. And so keep in mind, don't take this too seriously. This is just kind of off the cuff and I'm just kind of putting these where I think they belong. So as far as best soundbar over here, it's gonna go at the very top above the Sonos Beam. As far as powered speakers, these are also powered speakers. Um, where would I place these? I'd probably place them somewhere around here. So not at the very top, maybe somewhere in the middle. Uh, as far as best under $1,000, let's see here. Let me just place these here for a second. I would also place them, and there's a lot of good speakers under $1,000. So these other speakers, we're gonna outperform it, but they also need amplifiers. But let's just say overall performance wise, I'm gonna place them somewhere around here. And finally, best overall sound, regardless of price. I'm gonna put these somewhere, let's see here. So bookshelf speakers with amplifiers, of course, are gonna sound considerably better, but Let's see, I would say these are gonna go somewhere around, maybe here. All right, so there you have it. So if you're into the technical part, I wanna quickly go over some of the things that they're doing with some psychoacoustic tricks, and I thought it was very fascinating. Let me take a look at my notes here. So one thing that I found is that they're using all the speakers kind of like a subwoofer satellite combo, meaning that all the speakers actually play the low frequencies so that they're not wasting that energy even though let's say it sounds only coming from the left speaker, the signal is only coming from the left speaker, it'll still play the bass from all the other ones because you can't tell that it's coming from the other speakers, just the bass part. So that's interesting. For my measurements, I'm finding that about 300 Hertz and below is what they're considering the bass region, right? That's Those are their subs. They're using all the speakers for their subs. I also did notice that if I play sound from a single speaker, other sounds still play from the other speakers, meaning that I think that they're using some kind of uh, phase shifts to kind of widen the sound stage. So Polk uses this in their Legend series called the Stereo Dimensional Array, SDA, where they put a, a sound out of phase to kind of cancel out what is not supposed to go to the other ear. So it's called crosstalk cancellation. And I think they might be doing something similar to that to kind of widen the sound stage but very smart and it actually works. So the last thing I found was, I think that they're using bass harmonics to kind of improve the bass response. So if there's a bass frequency that it can't play just because it's too small, it'll play other harmonics to kind of hint at that bass note. So your brain kind of fills in like, okay, I'm hearing these notes, maybe it's also playing this other bass note, which it actually isn't really playing. So uh, I think that that's one way that they get around it and it really works as well. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the product itself. So overall conclusion, I could easily recommend this if you're looking for a soundbar solution. This is the most accurate with the most features. If you don't mind spending the money, I mean, I don't love soundbars, but it's hard to hate on this thing. It actually works. It sounds pretty good. And uh, yeah, bravo, bravo, bravo Sonos. You guys did a good job. So there you have it. If you like the video, Make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.